Hi there and welcome to another episode of The Art of Mystery where I draw a picture and recount a story of a mysterious nature. Today I have Adam joining me. Hey. Is that all you're gonna say? Hi guys. Welcome to the channel. Please <laughs> like, subscribe, leave some nasty comments below. Leave some nice comments below. Leave some nice comments below. Yeah. yeah. This takes a lot of hard work actually. Um, yeah, today we're discussing a really hard case that was, that really hit, I don't know why it hit home for me, but it was very difficult. It's one of those things that just sticks with you. Like mm. those cases that, uh, I mean, I like true crime. Um, and most of the time I can distance myself from the actual issue, yeah. but, um, this one for some reason just really hit home. Yeah, actually, I think the last one was that podcast we listened to those two amazing women who that what's the podcast mm. called um my favorite murder. my favorite murder that one with the woman in the house from january 2018 where that was pretty amazing but still pretty brutal yeah a big inspiration i think for this channel yeah i mean i like the much. i i don't necessarily like recounting a story alone mm. because it I feel awkward. <laughs> anyway, this is the case of the boy in the chimney. Okay, so in 2015, Chuck Murphy, who is a builder by trade from Colorado Springs, uh, was demolishing his old and decaying cabin, which was originally a homestead in Thunderhead Ranch. He had originally purchased the cabin in the 1950s, but he decided to demolish it after being after it was relatively abandoned. He did that so he can make way for property development. Mm. So while they were tearing down the cabin, they were tearing down the chimney and they discovered a body of a man. And it wasn't Santa? <laughs> no, it wasn't Santa. Um, it was actually, dental records actually identified the corpse to be Joshua Maddox. He was a young man that went missing seven years prior to, to his discovery. Ooh. So Josh had lived with his dad and two sisters less than a mile from where he was found in Woodland Park, which is a small city um, within Pike National Forest, Teller County in Colorado. He was said to be a very bright, creative boy with a really free spirit. People um, described him as kind of like a hippie. He had a real talent for writing. He loved music and playing the guitar. And yeah, he was just, he, he loved the outdoors as well. So his disappearance. On May 8th, 2008, Josh told his sister Kate he was going for a walk. And like I said, he's the type of person who loved nature. Mm -hmm. He loved going on hikes, especially hiking alone. Um, so that wasn't out of the ordinary at all. Yeah, and it's basically all woodland and mountains in Colorado. Sorry if that's not completely accurate, but that's what I know it for. I, I mean, in this particular part of Colorado, it is. Mm. So he he failed to return home later that day, and the family actually didn't think too much of it right. because of the type of person he was. Mm -hmm. It wasn't out of the ordinary for him to kind of detour from his original plans, I guess. Yeah, right, okay. Because like I said, free spirit, kind of hippie. So they didn't think anything of it. It was not until five days later that they decided to report him as missing. Five days? Five days later. I mean, there's being a free spirit and then there's being like, have we forgot something? I mean, he was 18 years old. Yeah. I mean, what would your mum and dad have done at 18? I mean, would you say you're a free spirit? No. Oh, yeah, true. Okay, well, I'm a free spirit, yeah. and my mum would definitely have called the police 24 hours later. Yeah, I think I think my parents would have as well. But look, I, I'm i not here to judge No, 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 no. I mean, but five days is a long time. Mm. What And what year was this? 2008. Yeah, it, so, I mean, look, it's not he, as if mobile phones and stuff wasn't around. Like He was, he was used to hiking, mm -hmm. so he was generally, uh, I expect, um, pretty comfortable in the woods. Was it in the winter? Do you know? What, what, what month was it? It was May. May, so, yeah, okay, they're, they're like spring, May, summer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. Fair enough, okay. Five days, but yeah, okay. 
So the search lasted for months with no leads. Um, and his sister Kate actually wrote a post on her Facebook, I think it was, basically s- simply saying that she hoped he left to start a new life. This is what the post said. Since Josh was 18, it has been reasonable to assume he may have decided to leave town to start a new life. As one of his two older sisters, I have always chosen to believe that this was the case. I have expected Josh to return home to my father's house at any time with a wife and small children so they can meet their grandparents and two aunts. Josh was always known for his musical and literary talent, so maybe we would find him playing music with a band on tour or catch him writing successful novels under a pen name so that he could keep his preferred lifestyle of solitude in the woods. Keep in mind, this was still when they were searching for him. Mm. So this was her conclusion um, as to what had happened to him. Mm -hmm. Um, In her head, he had chosen to leave. Yeah, they had just done a bunk. Yeah. So Josh was a really good student. He wasn't involved in any trouble and there wasn't any concern about his mental health. However, and this is a really sad part of the story, um, two years before his disappearance, on the 1st of June 2006, his older brother Zachary died by suicide a week before his high school graduation. Right. As expected, this was incredibly difficult on Josh and his family. But despite this, he had been doing really well. You know, it was two years afterwards and his family made a note to say that he was... A relatively happy person. Mm-hmm. I think that's an important thing to note because a lot of times when people go missing, people suspect suicide. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, especially if there's a family history and his older brother had done it. But um, yeah, sad. Mm. That was the part that really, like, imagine the grief of his family having lost two sons. So when the Maddox family heard the news about the discovery of Josh, when they heard the news of the discovery of Josh's body, of course they were shocked, right? Um, And Kate, his older sister, mentioned how it didn't make any sense, how she expected him to be anywhere in the world except for really close to home and dead. Mm. Her conclusion was that Josh was exploring the abandoned cabin and an accident happened. Yeah, so Kate obviously thought he was just going to wander off into a new life of solitude. So he must have, well, maybe he had expressed some desire of that before. And the fact that he was dead just around the corner, yeah, I imagine that would be a shock. But I don't know. I find it interesting. I just find it interesting when either the police slash coroner and immediate family always go to, oh, it must have been an accident or it must have been suicide or Mm -hmm. I think that's the easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. But I guess the fact that it was found in a chimney is a bit strange. I mean... And I'll get to that because there's a lot of pieces of information in this case that just don't make sense. Mm. According to the autopsy undertaken, um, the coroner was Al Bourne. He stated that the hard tissue showed no signs of trauma. There were no broken bones, no knife marks. There were no bullet holes. Uh, There is so far no answers to a number of these things. It is very confusing. So the cabin where Josh was found was only two blocks from his home, uh, but the searchers had overlooked the building completely. The building was in the middle of a large plot of land surrounded by tall pine trees. Mm Mm-hmm. Police actually suggested that if he cried for help, no one would have heard him. Mm. So his death was was theorised to be either hypothermia or dehydration, but the authorities just didn't know. So the coroner was outborn, and he determined on the 28th of September 2015 uh, that the death was accidental. He suggested that Josh climbed down the chimney and became stuck. The most likely cause of death, according to Bourne, was hypothermia because the temperature actually dropped to minus six degrees Celsius when he was in the chimney. Mm. Now, Chuck Murphy, he's the man that actually discovered Josh's body, right? 
um, he didn't agree with this ruling, and there's a number of reasons why. So the coroner explained that Josh being in the chimney was a voluntary act to gain access to the cabin. Mm -hmm. But Chuck said this was impossible because when he constructed the chimney, um, he made it with a steel rebar. It kind of like a large wire mesh that hung from steel hooks inside to keep like Animals debris and stuff. Yeah, yeah. out. And he said it was very, it was a heavy wire gate, a wire mesh. I installed it across the chimney about one row of bricks from the top. We didn't want trouble with raccoons and things getting into the chimney. Now, Chuck said it would have been impossible for him to move that thing, right? Yeah, if it's bricked in, yeah. The coroner born further disputed this, saying we didn't see any mesh, we didn't see any metal there. Yeah. And of course, because Chuck was dismantling the house, all of the metal was put away mm. in the truck for scrap. Yeah. And because of this, the coroner actually reopened the case three days after his first initial conclusion. Right, so even though he didn't agree... He reopened it. He case. still reopened it. So he must have realised that, oh, okay. There's more, though. There is more. Okay. So uh, there was more inconsistencies, which... I, I don't know why it was only Chuck that was bringing this up. I don't know where the family was. Mm. Um, I think, I mean, what would you do if your family would like, would you just accept what the coroner decided and move on with your life? Um, no, look, I mean, I think you'd have to interrogate the facts pretty, um, pretty hard if it's your son who's just been found dead. I guess, I don't know, like on the face of it like he's crawled into a chimney got stuck and died it seems a bit outlandish but i guess if the authorities have looked at it and the coroner's looked at it and said that's the most likely cause mm. although you might not necessarily agree it might be easier to just accept that and try and move on because he's dead ultimately yeah and i think some people do that do do that but but here's the thing it's like it happens in a lot of cases where you almost have to fight. When you know something is wrong, mm. you have to fight for more investigation to happen. Yeah. And Chuck was the one fighting in this case. So Chuck questioned the final report. So Josh was found in the fetal position in the chimney, right? Mm-hmm. But his knees were above his head. So upside down in the chimney. Yeah. So Chuck said that if... He were to be in that position, he would have crawled into the chimney head first. Which, yeah, you would never do. You would never do that. No. Uh, no, you just wouldn't. Mm -mm. On top of this, and, and this was um, really kind of shocking to me, I guess. When Chuck went to the cabin to start demolition, he found that a large breakfast bar that was attached to the kitchen had been torn away from the kitchen and dragged over to the chimney, blocking it from the inside of the cabin. Uh-oh. Yeah. Lastly, this is a fact that actually confused Bourne, the coroner. And it was the fact that the only piece of clothing that Joshua had been wearing was a thin thermal shirt. And his other items of clothing were folded next to the fireplace. Yeah, right. Well, this is clearly not not uh, kosher, as the, our Jewish friends would say. How would... I mean, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense for that to be... An, no, an unless you were tripping balls on some kind of psychedelic drug, because that kind of thing does happen. People take their, their clothes off and get themselves in all kinds of crazy situations, but... Of, but blocking the fireplace. Yeah, there was no drugs found in his system, though. No. So, yeah, it's definitely foul play, I'm guessing. So Bourne commented, this one really taxed our brains. We found his clothing just outside the firebox. He had only a thermal T-shirt. We don't know why he took his other clothes off. He took his, sock, his shoes and socks off. Why he went outside, climbed up the roof and went down the chimney head first. Mm-hmm. It was not linear thinking. 
Despite that, Bourne still concluded once more that the death was an accident with Josh coming down the chimney, upside down, half naked. Mm. So, I mean, it still didn't make sense to Chuck um, and he wasn't convinced it was an accident. Another thing is, which there's got to be some, uh, like you, you hear it in so many cases that police just, it seems like police just don't do their jobs because the coroner mentioned that there had been calls made to both police and the coroner's office, which named suspects that bragged about killing Josh. Right. They were never followed up. Mm. Yeah, that is, you hear, do hear that a lot. Mm. There was only one suspect. He was allegedly last seen with Josh, but the evidence was pretty much inconclusive and could not be, and he could not be placed at the crime of the scene. Bourne was also doubtful. Scene of the crime? <laughs> crime of the scene, yeah, scene, at the crime scene. Bourne was also doubtful that this man could position him in such a way on his own. Yeah. Yeah, to stuff a grown man into a chimney with mm. your knees. And would be pretty hard. There was no there was no damage to his body as well. So mm. he died in that chimney. He didn't die prior. Well, as far as we know. As far as we know. Yeah. Yeah. The mystery doesn't end there though because this is where things get really interesting. There was a post from Reddit in 2015. I don't know who posted it, um, and I could only find a shortened um, excerpt Mm -hmm. from the actual post, Um, and it's pretty pretty long. Do you want to read it? Do I want to read it out loud? Do you want to read it, yeah. Yeah, sure. I went to high school with this skinny, dorky hippie named Andy who played guitar in a band. I was never good friends with him or anything, but a year or so after I graduated, one of my good friends, Josh started hanging out with him, and then went missing. Turns out that in addition to becoming a lot scarier looking, Andy had indeed headed down to New Mexico, where he found himself shooting the shit with the caretaker of a disabled guy and got invited over to their apartment. Caretaker gets in the shower, and when he comes back out, the disabled guy is stabbed to death and Andy's gone. When Andy got arrested, he also claimed to have killed a woman in Taos and stuffed her body in a barrel. The cops had indeed found a woman stuffed in a barrel in Taos, but already had somebody in custody for it and decided to stick with that guy instead. Years later, I found out that the caretaker had died in a bar fight and without him, the cops didn't have much in the way of evidence somehow. And without him, the cops didn't have much in the way of evidence somehow. So the case against Andy was dropped too. Several of us went to the cops saying, yo, Josh who went missing was last seen with Andy who's a murderer. Maybe you should check that guy out. Despite a fair amount of pestering, nothing ever really came of it. And by nothing, I mean the police mostly didn't even return our calls and once accidentally cancelled the bulletin on Josh because he's alive and well and living in the next town over. He wasn't. He was actually the chimney of an abandoned cabin like two blocks from his parents' house. The coroner said that the body had been there for about seven years and ruled the death accidental, concluding that Josh had probably climbed down the chimney in an attempt to break into the house and got stuck. The coroner said the body had been there for about seven years and ruled the death accidental, concluding that Josh had probably climbed down the chimney in an attempt to break into the house and got stuck, which, given the age of the corpse, doesn't seem overtly ridiculous. Except for the fact that in addition to Josh having last been seen with Andy immediately before his stabbing spree, People called in to report having heard rumours that Andy was bragging about having put Josh in a hole. Somebody had ripped a heavy bar off the wall in the kitchen and propped it against the fireplace. Or the fact that Josh's stuff was already in the cabin, meaning A, he'd have already broken in and would have had to have locked himself out to have to go to the chimney, and B, he might have noticed that either the flue or the big bar would have prevented him from getting through the fireplace. Or the fact that he was found, Josh's knees were above his head, which sounds to me like he would have had to go in head first. Disclaimer, not an expert at in all. Or maybe the fact that Josh was barefoot and naked from the waist down. This is just my opinion, but I don't care who you are. You don't try and climb head first into a chimney via a hole rusted through a metal grate with your dick hanging out. As far as I can tell, nobody even bothered to call Andy to ask if he knew anything. By the way, from what I hear, Andy's still out and about doing his thing when he's not in the mental hospital. All I'm saying is, 
I wish they had done some police shit. Open an investigation. Try to track down some leads. Interview some of the folks who have been calling in tips for the last seven years. Maybe check some semen or something. I don't know. Don't just say accidental dust off your hands and call it a day. So thoughts on that, expert. I think that post gives so much more information. Oh, so this isn't solved? Still not solved to this day? Mm. Oh, wow. I think it's this Andy guy, right? He's yeah. obviously been hanging out in the cabin with this Andy guy and this Andy guy's... Well, listen to this. So Andy so Andy Richard Newman, um, he was he was the prime suspect of the fatal stabbing, stabbing in New Mexico, as the Post described. And on top of that, Andy had very similar interests to Josh. Mm. So it's not a far reach to kind of conclude that they could have been friends. So that's it. That's this. It's still unsolved. Um, And yeah, and then maybe check for some semen or something is maybe suggesting that those two were having some kind of a relationship or... Well, I find it very interesting that why, why he would be naked. Like, okay, so if Andy did kill Josh, why did he strip him naked? Yeah, you wouldn't necessarily do that. Uh, or uh, you wouldn't leave a t-shirt on mm. so maybe something happened where either um, Josh was getting changed when he was killed potentially or he was wing- willingly um, naked in front of uh, Andy if Andy's mm. involved at all it's uh, the, the it's, stuffed in a barrel thing it's so very strange because I mean, the the thing that perplexes me the most, I think, out of all of this is the fact that his clothes were folded. So whoever took his clothes off took the time to fold it up and place it next to the mm-hmm. chimney or the fireplace. Yeah. Maybe the clothes were wet and they were about to light a fire to dry the clothes by the fireplace. Yeah, that's an idea. Why would you get the breakfast bar and stuff the chimney? That is that to stop him getting back in the house? That's probably probably yeah. Maybe maybe something had gone terribly wrong where Andy had locked himself in and locked Josh out, and he didn't want Josh getting back in. Mm. Ugh, just... Yeah, it it just doesn't make sense, especially with the way that Josh is described. He. It seems so out of character for any of that to happen. Anyway, this has been the case of the boy in the chimney, otherwise known as uh, Joshua Maddox. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd be interested to know your opinion. Um, I think it goes without saying that Andy Newman is kind of the prime suspect in this case Mm, but certainly should be spoken to further um yeah i mean strange things have happened anyway thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this little drawing of a mermaid i decided to draw something unrelated to the case Mm. just to kind of give our brains a visual break if you will anyway thanks for listening guys catch up